In January 2020, we left our motorhome in Arizona and flew to Florida to travel in a rental RV for two weeks. We drove from Tampa to Key West and back again, staying in eight different locations along the way. We give you a tour of the RV, share where we stayed and what we learned in our first RV rental experience. So whether you're planning to rent or buy an RV, looking for great places to visit in Florida or just want to come along for the ride, you'll find something for you in this video. Get all this organized once we get to the campground. Please know we filmed this video in January before the pandemic hit the US and delayed release of this video until it was appropriate to start sharing travel content again. Are you ready? Let's hit the road. Hey there, good looking. Do you need a ride? <laughs> All right, Jules, ready for an adventure? Yep, let's go. This is fun. I love being able to take an actual RV to pick you up at the airport. It's so easy and nimble to drive. I was parking in the cell phone lot, parked in an actual regular parking space for a car. That's pretty darn cool. drive this good this is on the Ram Promaster chassis and it's got really good acceleration for as big as it is I it's, it's quite zippy quite a bit of power for a gas-powered RV this is really fun I wasn't quite sure what to expect but this is cute. It's a cute RV. I like the layout. We're going to give you guys a tour shortly when we get settled into the campground. But now we're just enjoying zipping around the roads in a much smaller RV than what we're used to. Because as you may know, we live full time in a 40 foot class A motorhome. So this is a really fun change to just mix things up. And uh, what a great way to be experiencing the Florida RV Super Show this week. Staying in a rental RV instead of hotels. There's the RV show getting all set up. Here's the ring house where we're having a big party on Thursday night. Right the this is small and nimble enough that we can get around and use this as our daily driver. But of course we've got everything with us. We're not having to haul suitcases around anymore for the next two weeks while we're here in this rental RV. So I just love being able to travel and have everything that we want with us. Cook meals, get snacks, use the bathroom. And I think Mark's probably going to be very happy not to be lugging all the suitcases around really in and out of hotel rooms. <laughs> Especially not lugging cases of books around and all of our luggage. Yeah. So first stop, we're going to find a supermarket to uh, stock up on food and beverages for our RV venture. And uh, yeah, we could just park in the parking lot and load it straight in the RV. I hope all this fits in the RV. Oh. Whoa. How's the turning circle on that? That is amazing. I just did a U-turn on a two-lane road. <laughs> That's amazing. Definitely never able to consider that in a bigger coach. I usually need at least six lanes to do a U-turn in our motorhome. Time to go to the show. So if you saw our video about borrowing our friend's van, you'll know this is part two of our Trying on RVs for Size series. We've been trying out different kinds of RVs as we consider what might be next for us at RV Love. So we stayed on site and headed into the Florida RV Super Show. We always like to see what's new. We got to meet up with some of our RV Love community and sign copies of our book, Living the RV Life, Your Ultimate Guide to Life on the Road.
and finished up with an after party with some of our favorite RVers. After a very social few days, it was great to chill out for a night in this peaceful boondocking spot. Next, we headed to the St. Petersburg area where we spent a few nights in a campground with full hookups. I do love how easy this is to park. Just give you a quick little view of our campsite here. We're at the KOA in St. Petersburg, Madeira Beach. You can see there's lots of room on this site. Uh, really easy to back this in. We've been coming in at night the last two nights. A very nice little campground. We're, some, we're underneath a uh, lovely tree here with some Spanish moss. With these campsites that we're looking at now actually are backing onto the water. Welcome to our little rental RV for this next couple of weeks. It's a Winnebago Trend 23L, 24 feet long, no slides. So come on in and let me show you around. This is like an elk shaped kitchen. It's got a really deep sink in here, which is really cool. I haven't seen this before. It's a really nice shape and it's got a little lid on here that pops up and pops down so you can hide all your messy dishes. We've got a two burner propane stove. Reasonable amount of storage actually. This um, big cupboard up here, which I can't reach very well, but uh, there's another one here. We keep all our chips. <laughs> um, we've got another pantry over here, which is handy right by the door. And that uh, that's where we also have the controls here for like the water heater and the water pump and to check the levels on the tank and the battery and that kind of a thing. Stereo here, and this is the microwave. Again, out of my reach. This is a Norcold fridge and uh, it's pretty well stocked, but I can tell you we completely filled this thing up. Fridge and freezer, separate freezer up here. So this fit tons of food for the two weeks that we're renting this RV. And to be honest, I don't think we're going to get through it all. So I'm um, really happy with the capacities of that. The corner bed, you can see it's got a curve here, which is a little strange for Mark who sleeps on this side, but it's been fairly comfortable. I think if we were to have an RV like this, the first thing we would do is replace the mattress with a custom mattress, but it's a rental for, um, we're just dealing with it. <laughs> Three cabinets up here, and that's where Mark is keeping his clothes. Closet here, uh, would be nice if there's some extra drawers in here, but we're making it work. Put our pans and our plates and another drawer where I have one of those. And it's a dry bar, which means that you can take a shower and the toilet won't get wet. Interesting little shower screen. Just clear plastic. Regular shower nozzle. It's it's pretty good actually. It definitely passes our toilet test. Got plenty of room here for things. There's a storage uh, cabinet up here and also another cupboard down here. So bathroom's been working pretty well. One thing that is annoying is this handle we've been catching ourselves on this multiple times a day so this could be really easily changed out for just one of those round knob handles and there would be far less injuries <laughs> so this is probably my favorite part of this little rv i love this big table because it's deep enough to be able to have your work stuff which is what we're doing this week but then when it's time to eat you can just push it to the side and you've still got plenty of room to eat as well if you just pull this pin you can swing out this section and now it's even larger and brings in this separate couch. So, and it's a lower workspace, so it's easier ergonomics for Julie. And it's got an additional drop down bed if you have additional people needing sleeping arrangements. I'm not putting it all the way down so I don't crush my computer terminal, but you get the point. <laughs> I think this RV would be great for a couple, definitely great for a family, you know. But this has got, I think it's a shoulder harness seatbelt, no? There's room there, two people. There's two. <laughs> well, you can just wear it like it's this. It's not a backpack, honey. <laughs> oh, it's nice. I mean, it's it's still got a bit of brown and beige going on, but it's still pretty modern and contemporary for an RV. Quite a bit of storage, actually, just 
all the way around. There is another little TV hidden up here in this cabinet. So I like that it's tucked away. Ooh, never watch that. So right above me here is a skylight, which is awesome for bringing in extra light. And we close that up when we're trying to reduce heat gain coming into the RV. This has actually been really livable. I've been really happy with how it's working. The floor plan, the layout, it's a nice model. They only made this apparently for uh, two years. I just don't know why they stopped making them because it's a really nice livable floor plan. And we're enjoying it and uh, we'll see how we feel after our two weeks stay. Awesome. Alright, ready to eat. So as far as the cabin area of this RV, it's based on a Ram Promaster chassis and so it drives really easy. It's very car-like in how it drives. The seats are reasonably comfortable. The adjustments are a little funny. You can't really recline them very well. And what I think is a big miss is these don't spin around. I've seen Ram Promasters with these chairs spinning around which would allow them to be more of a part of the living space, but these do not have that option. Uh, but it drives super easy. The, the controls, I think, would be very easy for Julie to drive as well. I'm looking forward to her getting behind the wheel and giving it a try. And so we've had this for about six days. We've been running all around town. And I've actually did have to fill it up with gas once. It's gasoline powered, 3.5 liter V6. It's about 260 horsepower. And, but it's actually pretty good power for this fairly lightweight 9,000 pound RV. From what I can tell, it's gonna get somewhere between 10 and 14 miles per gallon. You can see how compact it is. It doesn't, it has so much space in this RV site because it's only 24 feet long. You can park it in a regular parking space, which is really convenient. Super easy to drive, super easy to park in a space. Um, let me show you some of the features out here. It has a couple storage bases outside. This one is bigger than it looks. It looks like it's just small, but it does drop down. Same thing back here. We've got folding chairs back there. This one drops down all the way to here. So I've got big totes, I've got our luggage in here. It's quite large and they do have thoughtful things like little clamps to hold the door up when you're, so you keep both your hands free. And this storage area is still accessible from inside when you lift up the bed. This little pocket door is for a sewer hose. You see it has a small receiver hitch because this is not meant to tow much of anything it has i think a 2,000 pound towing limit not much it's only the one inch hitch feels really modern with the styling of it and with the led lights it's got a backup camera up top so the sewer connections are down here at the back and they are off the ground a, a little more than a length of a hand so you got to be mindful of that if you're backing up over something as long as it's shorter than this you can back up quite far it does have an onboard generator I believe it's a 2600 watt generator. It's propane powered. This is an external shower. This is the freshwater inlet when you're hooked up to a campground full city water connection. This tank fill is separate from the regular city connection and it has a 26 gallon fresh tank, 35 gallon gray tank and 40 gallon black tank. This is the propane connection. I like that the propane connection is here in a fairly safe spot. Sometimes I've seen these propanes in the back behind the rear tires, which I think is more likely to get debris thrown on it and more likely to back up onto something. So this feels safer here. Pretty quick tour of the outside of this, right back to the cab entry. It's really great that you can just jump in and drive off. Assuming you've already unhooked everything, of course. RV sites and then over to cute little cabins and then at the end of that a, a tent camping area, boat launch dock. The pool area is actually really nice. It's got little thatch roof umbrellas and it's got a pool and a separate hot tub. Two separate 24 hour laundries. It's a pretty big park. It's about 444 sites counting the cabins and the RV sites. You'll find a comprehensive review of this campground <laughs> at our website rvlove.com. After a few days, it was time to move on, so we headed to a gas station to check the RV tyre pressure before heading to our next destination. And, well, ended up witnessing a hit-and-run accident. 
So I walked a ways away from the RV so you can actually hear me because the compressor is really loud and it takes a long time. So I got plenty of time to film a video, but fortunately they did include a nice tire pressure gauge and they did include a compressor, which I've actually used twice in the week we've had it once to help somebody else. And then here today to top up my pressures. Um, but again, I'm missing my Vire right now because this is taking a really long time just for a simple single tire and it's so noisy, which is why I didn't want to use it in the campground this morning. I'm just a big stickler on tire safety. So hopefully another 10 minutes or so, this will be done dumping up the tire and um, then I'll top up the other ones and we'll be on the road. Bye guys. Oh my God, she's driving like a maniac. Ooh, that was an eventful morning here, stopping to get, uh, re, re, what, what, are we, what were we doing? This has been a very eventful morning. <laughs> Airing the tires, witnessing an accident that ended up being uh, someone fleeing the scene of the accident, dealing with the sheriff, and we captured it on video and in photographic footage. So that is one of the advantages of being a YouTuber, I guess. Is that yes, we're able to help some people with some very solid evidence for the case. <laughs> very, very solid. So uh, anyway, after all that excitement, we're heading down now to our, our reservation at Oscar Shura State Park, down just uh, about an hour and 45 minute drive south today. We are going to be just a little bit north of Venice, which is a really cute town. Have never been to Venice. We're of course on the uh, west side and the Gulf Coast side of Florida. So it's a beautiful day today for a drive. So uh, we just focus on driving and enjoying that for the rest of the day, I think, and get settled into our campsite. Next to us off to one of Florida's famous state parks, Oscar Scherer State Park Campground, located between Sarasota and Venice. I heard a huge sploosh and came over to look. No fish makes waves that big. That was a gator. No. Really? No small pets at this site. Now we know why. Nice having a small rig because it increases the accessibility and availability of sites because there's a lot more small sites than big sites. Easy to park. So tonight we have got chicken fajitas and this came together really easy because we just cut up the peppers, the onions, a uh, little bit of uh, jalapeno as well. And then this was a pre-packaged grilled chicken from Costco. Put it in there with some fajita sauce, heat it up and we're done. It was super simple and easy and this smells mm. amazing. Can you see us? Bless you. Brisk morning here. Gotta watch out for falling iguanas. They fall out of the trees when it gets this cold. That's not true. It is so true. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're cold blooded, they fall out of trees. Yeah. If you're interested in learning more about this campground, we have a campground review on our website at rvlove.com. We're getting ready to pack down and hit the road and head to the Florida Keys. So this is our pack down in a 24 foot motorhome. Let me show you what this entails. Ready to pack down? Yep. Let's, let's time it. Sure. I'll hit start. I just gotta put the fan down. Make sure the door is shut. I'll put the laptop off of that desk. Turn off the light. Go unplug our power and pretty much we'll be rolling. Let me go. Do that. Be right out. Hang on. 
Oh, what are we doing? You're causing me to have a huge <laughs> delay. <laughs> Waiting for you to come out here, I would have already been driving. So, unplugged it from power, put it back in here. We weren't hooked up to sewer here at this site. We only had water power. So, I just filled the tank. We've only been here a couple days. It's plenty. Um, just unplug the power. I'll go around, dump the tank on the way out, and we're rolling. Let's go. Two minutes, but it was probably about one minute. If I wasn't filming, it would have been 45 seconds. So we have friends about half an hour from here that are dry camping and invited us to come and visit with them. This will be our second night boondocking in the motorhome. I've been able to stay for free. And who said there was no such thing as boondocking in Florida? That's right. We made a quick stop to visit Venice, Florida, a beautiful little town with loads of charm, restaurants and boutiques. We were even able to find a parking spot for the RV right on the main street. Someone else brought their RV downtown today. Next, it was off to visit Venice Beach, just a few minutes down the road from the downtown area. And We've got another Rockstar parking spot for the RV. We've got to admit, we're feeling pretty spoiled by where we're able to park our RV and to be able to just walk up and access some of the best places in Florida. I think we could get used to this. We love visiting the town and beach in Venice and it's definitely a place we plan to make a return visit. Then it was off to our next boondocking site and our last night before heading all the way down to the Florida Keys. rental for 10 days now and I'm finally getting a chance to jump in the driver's seat. I don't usually drive our 40 foot motorhome so um, I'm looking forward though to giving this a try being only 24 feet and 
you know, we're not driving with our whole life in this one. That, that makes all the difference. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fine. It's just like driving a car. I just have to be mindful of the length and the height, and uh, but I feel good. You can see my feet are dangling a bit here. They're not on the, straight on the ground. So. No, that's going to be a problem. With my feet dangling, it's going to pull on my back. It's going to hurt, and I'll pop over for a little bit. Get used to it, get into the groove. Who knows, it might get back to Arizona to pick up CC and I'll want to take over driving the big diesel pusher motorhome. What do you think, Mark? Maybe. <laughs> much easier to drive. Oh my gosh. The guy at the rental shop said the 87 grade is best for this RV, so that's what we're using. There we go, I said 50 bucks and it was $49.04. $230.90 a gallon, took like 19 or 20 gallons, so uh, yeah. Not too bad, that's gonna be, uh, get us down to the keys. The range on this is only 300 miles. Our other coach will do eight or 900 miles on a tank. Not as pretty as normal, but still pretty. So even though it was January and peak season in Florida, we still managed to find some great campsites. We used our RV Life app to explore our options and managed to score a couple of nights at Leo's Campground in Key West. Of course, having a smaller RV made that much easier. We did have to change sites for the second night, but it was no big deal. It would be easy to just hang out and relax at the campground, but we were ready to head downtown to explore Key West. It wasn't our first visit, and we knew parking is always a challenge. Don't try to park your RV or even a van downtown. Luckily, we had a backup plan. Taking a little cruise down to Key West today. 74 degrees. Yeah, how cool is this? We show up in Key West and our friends say, hey, here's our car. You can borrow it for a couple days. We got an extra. How? That's fantastic. It's actually a car I've wanted to drive for a long time because I think they're really interesting. It's a smart car, but it's the, the newer version of it. It actually drives pretty fun. It's more zippy than I expected, and the turning on it is phenomenal. I feel like I can turn around in a circle in a, in a parking space. It's just amazing. We only had about 24 hours in Key West, but we did manage to visit a few highlights, hitting up the markets, Duval Street, the mile zero sign of Highway 1, followed up by happy hour and watching the sunset at Mallory Square with friends. Fun fact, Bob and Veronica are actually featured as one of the RV case study stories in our book, Living the RV Life. You'll find them in chapter eight, talking about their experience changing domicile. On Sunday morning, we packed up the RV and left the campground to start our 400 mile drive back up to Tampa. But first, breakfast. 
Star Vista. We're in Key West. We got a free parking spot right here by the water. It is gorgeous. Free parking. It's about a mile from downtown. Mark's looking up a bit of a scenic breakfast this morning. Yeah, you gotta love looking out over the crystal blue water of Key West. Cooking breakfast. That's what RV's about. With sausages and eggs and potatoes. Breakfast in Key West. Mmm. Okay. A little southwestern scramble. It was time to hit the road again and make the most of our last full day of driving in our rental RV. We took it nice and easy and the weather was perfect. Welcome to the spectacular seven mile bridge in the Florida Keys. We spent our last night at Lazy Days RV campground in Sefna, Florida before returning our rental RV. That's where they did a final walk around and check to make sure that everything was okay. We are returning our rental RV after two weeks exploring around Florida and this has worked really well for us. Um, floor plan, layout, drivability, been really happy with this. Okay, this says 1159 for trip mileage, average economy 15.3. So in two weeks time, we did about three hours on the generator and about 1,200 miles, which is about 30 hours of driving. <laughs> Definitely put it through its paces in a couple weeks. This was a great little unit. Enjoyed our rental. And uh, if you want more information, go over to our blog, rvlove.com. We've got loads of information, whether you're somebody who wants to rent an RV or somebody who has an RV and you're thinking about renting it out. So hop on over. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, we'll see you on the road. Have you heard about the Hit The Road RV Summit? It's a one day virtual event with over 15 RV travel and lifestyle experts, including us. Find out more at hittheroadrvsummit.com and we hope to see you there.